I want to reach back to the meditation of two weeks ago when I raised certain very important questions and read as a background for the second question in our consideration, this meditation from the Inward Journey. In thy presence we become aware of many divisions within the inner circle of the self. When we enter into communion with thee, we are never sure of the voice that speaks within us. We do not always know which voice is the true voice. Sometimes it is the clear call of the heart, remembering an unfulfilled hunger from other days. Sometimes it is but an echo of some failing impulse to good, which we had pushed aside that a private end may triumph even in the face of the distinct call of truth. Often it is the muttering of needs that do not shape themselves in words because they are one with all the ebb and flow of every passing day. At times the voice is like a clarion rising above all conflicts and confusions, so uttering the need for courage to stand against some evil to witness for the good where the cost is high and the penalty great. Sometimes the voice is muted. Sometimes telling us of hopes unrealized and dreams that will not rest until they incarnate themselves in us. All the while we pull back, but they will not let us go. In the midst of all the sounds rising above all the mingled words, there is a strange voice, but, but not quite a stranger. A man recognizes it. It seems to come from every part of him, but cannot rest itself on any point of sound. He waits, he listens. When all is still, he listens now at a deeper level of silence. In soundless movement there floats up through all the chambers of his being, encompassing all the tongued cries from many selves, one word, God. And the answer is the same, filling all the living silence before thy face, God, God. We talked about the question, who am I? What is my name? And today I want to follow that with a second question that grows out of the first one. What do I, I want? What do I want really? What is it that is the fundamental thing that I'm after with my life? What, what is the meaning of, of all of the activities and the strivings and, and the struggles? What, after all, is my point? Am I really concerned, ultimately, about providing some windbreak against the world around me? Am I, am I really concerned about the accumulation of economic power which will give to me a sense of quiet security and tranquility without the threat either of poverty or some other kind of insecurity that can be measured in terms of dollars and cents, of things, of property? Is this the be-all and end-all of my striving? Or is it for something else, perhaps for fame, for, for a certain kind of, of honor, so that my name or my memory will be preserved and, and men will take cognizance of my presence, not because of what I may be in and of myself, but because of the kind of image 
that my life projects on the screen at which other men are looking? Is this the thing that I'm after? What is it that I really want? What is it that is capable of making me bring to bear upon a single end or focus or purpose all of the resources of my life, my thinking, my dreaming, my struggling, so that in the fulfillment of myself, this thing will follow. Now, when I raise the question as to what it is that I, I really want, what, it is, what is it that, that I am I'm trying to, to find, to, to become, to, to get hold of, I'm assuming that this is the kind of world in which that for which a man is willing to pay the price of the, the full orb and, and yielding of the nerve center of, of, of his consent, that this is the kind of world that honors that kind of activity on the part of personality. For, you see, we either believe that life is finished, is fixed, is is hard, is, is all readied. And if we believe this fundamentally, then we know deeper than ourselves that there isn't anything that can be done about anything. That, that life as it is given is predetermined and is finished. Or we may be of the mind that life in its essence is, is not fixed. Is, is not frozen, is not finished, but life in its essence is fluid, is creative, that there is a dynamism in which all life, individual life, is, is grounded and, and that purposes, therefore, goals, dreams, ideals, can fulfill themselves because of the, the fluid, flowing character of all of life. And if the latter is true, as I believe it is true, then if a man is able to select a goal, a purpose, which to him is of transcendent significance, and on behalf of which, he is willing to put all of the resources of his life and thought and mind at its disposal, then this is the kind of world that yields, that responds to this kind of demand. We, we have seen people who are caught up in, in a single idea. We say they have a fixed idea, or they, to use a, a colloquial phrase, they, we say they are hipped on something. And every time you see them, this is all they talk about. And, and if you don't want to be involved in it, then you have to escape them in some way. There is, there is a kind of, of contagion that is inherent in the process when, when a person is able to put at the disposal of the thing that he seeks all of the resources of his life. Now, when he does this, then it means two things. One, that he is one thing. He, he becomes one thing. And also it means that the thing to which he is devoted, its quality, its character, its dimension, these things begin to invade him. And he becomes not merely like the thing that he seeks, but he becomes one with the thing that he seeks. This is the kind of world in which that for which a man is 
willing and able to yield the nerve center of his consent and to put at the disposal of that single end all of the resources of his mind and life and spirit, this is the kind of world that honors that. And, and it is wonderful, you see, because, because a man may not be talented. He may not be, be a great man in, in other people's eyes. He may be just a simple, humble human being, but at the place where he functions, with all of his simplicity, with all of his limitations, if he is able at that spot to say yes with all of himself to the thing which to him is more important than whether he lives or dies, whether he succeeds or fails, if he is able to say yes, then the resources of life begin to move towards him. It is this that the master saw. He says that life is automatic, that, that if the conditions for growth and for development are met, then growth and development flow automatically. This is the kind of responsive, dynamic, living, throbbing universe that honors the mind and the spirit that together can say one thing and be that. What is it that you want, really, if this can be clear to you, then all of the resources of life, and in my thought, even God himself, honor that which is for you worthy of the complete and utter nerve center of your consent.